challenges and opportunities in those eight years of sequence. So we're going to go from the wearables, the eyeglasses, to Mr. Sotomayor-san. And what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about Honda. He's a, a chief engineer in the automobile R&D center. And we'll talk about the Honda Global Vision. And with that, welcome. I'm not going to be in the standpoint of uh, Japan, but uh, as a mobility company, I'd like to talk about what we are thinking about and where we find frustrations and complaints in the presentation. This is today's series of contents. I engaged in R&D and ITS, Intelligent Transport Service, as Honda and as a representative of Japan, so I'd like to explain the contents there. First, the world of ITS. Unlike mobile phone, Europe, Japan, USA uh, are leading the world. In what senses? Actually, Europe is a leading standardization. My interpretation of the reason why Europe is leading standardization is because there are many countries and several tens of years, countries uh, uh, were staging a war each other. And basically, ethnic uh, groups were different and uh, they were not in good terms and small towns and uh, industries are not expected to grow so much in the future. That's why, in order to maintain the industries that they had and market that they had, so everybody must have the same uh, concept and awareness uh, to build up. So step-by-step -step approach is taken. So Europe focuses on a technology originated in Europe. I think we can interpret that way. And if you look at the United States, and this is a big market for automotive industry. Which direction, depending on which direction U.S. automotive industry goes, there will be a big difference. So, DOT and NITSA are in the position to lead the regulations and lead industries. And Japan, actually industrial structure is quite different. Horizontal and government led. So uh, there is uh, quite a big conflict and uh, supported by a superb supplier in Japan. Japan is proceeding. That is a structure. Next page. This shows the ideas structure uh, of Japan. And, Probably it will be quite difficult for even Japanese people to understand, but the people overseas may find it difficult to understand. And let me start from the top. Actually, it, Japan's government cabinet has an IDS abroad conference. And uh, this is a de facto top management in Japan. And underneath, National Police Agency has an optical beacon. This is Japan-specific mechanism. And next, MLIT. This is a, a, a Ministry of Land, uh, Infrastructure and Transport. And the road division and ITS spot is available. So radio communication services is available on the highway. The below comes MLIT, Ministry of Economy, Trade, uh, Ministry, Transport Office. The vehicle to vehicle project comes below. Even if we see the two. MLIT, the ministry, I forgot how many years ago, but it, uh, the two ministries were merged, but in fact, you can see that, that they have automobile and road section, that they have different uh, budget, different force, that even after the merge, 
that this ministry is not becoming holy in Taiwan. That's a fact in Japan. And below that comes MIC, which leads to standardization. And in the end, the coordinator of all, ITS Japan, becomes in the bottom. This is how things are proceeded in Japan. And Japanese uh, death from the traffic accidents. We target below 2,500 people per year by 2018. So every year, the death number is decreasing every year. It's because the Japanese industry itself is uh, cooling down. The money, we cannot spend more. We don't have money to spend. So on weekends, you don't drive in a family. It, it's becoming less of us for us to go out on weekends. So Saturday and Sunday traffic accidents uh, is decreasing, therefore leading to the decrease in death number. Of course, uh, medication is in, uh, emergency medical rescue. Those areas are growing, so Japanese traffic accidents is not decreasing just because of the evolution in automobile, but industry and other medical uh, institutions and medical services are uh, leading to the decrease in the death from the traffic accidents. Unfortunately, the, the, this year it's uh, going higher, so maybe Japanese economy is picking up, uh, maybe you could say that in other words. So talking about something else now, in past few years, Japanese IPS has been spending time on these. But we had to waste time. How we wasted time as an ITS is going to be mentioned next. For Japan, locally meaning we have specific, we were looking into ITS band. MLIT had 5.8 gigahertz band. It is, it's been used for ITC partially, and that band with and Toyota's recommending 700 megahertz band. The analog TV vacant uh, used for ITS. That's what we've been doing. You can see from those pictures that left side, 5.8 gigahertz band is not reaching well. The middle and the right, you see more red, and they're pretty much the same. That's the communication quality. Roughly speaking, considering the current power, about 600 meter is uh, reachable. The middle standard here is using US DSRC. It's the same as a wave, meaning European ITS G5. In fact, the uh, device itself is the same, so US wave and the European ITS are equivalent of the middle, about 600 meter uh, reachability. This is the line of sight. And this is the known line of sight. The center, the sender, is be behind this building, hiding behind the building to see how much it reaches. So it's behind the building. So in fact, I'm sure this is not unlikely to happen in reality, but even so, two, three hundred meter is reachable distance. Yes, 700, when 700 mega is used, of course it sees more, a better reachability. That does happen. There in reality, as to what, how it is in the middle of the city, two weeks ago, ITS Congress took place in Odaiba, Tokyo, and we did the demonstration. Japanese auto manufacturers and Kurosage's had participated in this field test. The radio used, we used two types of radio that time. The middle 5.8 gigahertz band version 2 and 700 megahertz. The both had been used. And partially to the press, 
the Toyota versus Honda is what some press picked it up, but Honda, Nissan, and other manufacturers had worldwide the same standardized uh, one. On the other hand, where you, those manufacturers which focus on domestic market use the right. They work the same, pretty much, was the conclusion. It's not just about, let's uh, try to see the examples from abroad. It's not just Honda, of course, for us, especially uh, Europe and uh, activities in the States, we value a lot. So car to car communication consortium we have, it's on the European auto uh, manufacturer uh, consortium that we join. In fact, in, uh, this is a field test we did in Europe, in fact. The right side picture shows that motorcycles an automobile had been used on outbound. We did the hopping. When you uh, crossed uh, in outbound, how much speed you should have to get the connectivity or, or to lose connectivity. That's what we tested. The, the tires were stuck, so we could not go about 160. So 160 times 12, it was 320 that we still had connectivity. The Doppler shift is something we don't, shouldn't have to think because it's within the frequency band. The auto manufacturers, okay, we uh, thought we had to know what to, we had to test to see the fact is what we thought. So we do many kinds of trials and field tests like this. We went, the driver here you see is myself on the lower right. Next is the United States. As to where they are now, USDOT will be presenting something, uh, some will have some kind of regulatory in the end of this year regarding DSRC. That's what they've been seeing for the past three years. But DOT regulation announcement is not something we should be waiting for because. GM Ford Chrysler, Daimler, GM, Daniel Volkswagen, for them to uh, for them to compete equally with um, a U.S. Uh, manufacturers, uh, they're doing everything possible. This is just one example that U.S. DSRC has 5.2. 5.9 giga, IEEE 802.11p is a standardized standard they used, a dot 11p Wi-Fi chip is installed in smartphone chip. That's the engineering sample Wi-Fi chip used. So the vehicle to pedestrian warning system had been tested using that. Let me explain what this is about. The user has a smartphone. Okay. The smartphone. He's trying to walk, and then the car comes. And of, of case, it sends a warning to the vehicle. And the pedestrian gets a sign saying, watch out. So that mutually, when they get closer, they'll be automatically detected to send warnings to each other. That's the measure that's going on. Up until here is the uh, past measures. And this page talks about a different topic. Autonomous driving. Automatic driving concept will be explained here briefly. Why autonomous driving? Because it's not just for Honda, but it's been talked about since before. Every 10 years is a cycle, the boom comes. So now it's 2013. So to a bit after 2000, year 2000, when I, okay, in 1995, it was the first time I did the autonomous driving when I, after I joined the company. It was a complete autonomous driving. 
get it already released as an auto manufacturer. It's the same for any auto uh, manufacturer. If it's closed course, it runs autom automatically, it stops automatically uh, anywhere, if it's, as long as it's a closed area. But as a product wise, to guarantee to the customers it's, an, uh, it's a diff different story, it's going to be difficult. So automobiles for us, uh, in a negative way, for the general user, it's going to be industrial good for the general user. It has a highest fatality rate as a product. So that's a negative side we have, but everybody wants automobile is another thing. So in that sense, as it says on top, realize the joy of mobility, meaning with an automobile, you can have fun. You can freely go anyplace else, anywhere, anytime. Uh, you can do anything you want. For that, safety has to be guaranteed, and the environment uh, has to be improved. So that negative side of the automobile will be raised, could be raised. On your left side, as to how the automobiles can have a cooperative system, warning system, uh, simply said, there are three cycles, circles. The very one in the middle is a visible danger. It says visible disc. Visible danger is the first circle. What's uh, visible will be camera, radar could be utilized to detect the visible danger. You stop the car in the end. The, all the uh, radars are used towards the wall to stop the automobile. That's uh, you, something you see on your commercials. Usually, uh, in most of the cases, they stop. Uh, Honda automobiles are usually stopped, but in the very end, it hits the wall sometime intentionally because users don't do anything. That's a if they don't do anything, they stop, the automobile stop. But after that, you don't even uh, step on the brake. Then in three seconds, it starts moving, and then it hits the wall. That's how we designed it. So that when the customer doesn't detect, then it stops. That's one thing. And second point is that invisible invisible danger is the shade of the automobiles, uh, the shades of the buildings, the uh, car showing up from nowhere, something that radars cannot detect, that uh, can be detected using the radio communication. That's the vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to infrastructure, so called. So, cooperative, this is what we call cooperative system. The very last outer uh, circle. It's, it says unknown risk. For example, if you're running some street, there's an uh, instant. You don't have to take that route. Then it can be avoided and notified to avoid. Those are the three circles that we're going to uh, take. So that smooth and safe driving can be provided. If you look at the picture on the right hand side, this is a way of thinking about the autonomous driving. When we think about autonomous driving, you may wield your imagination in a different ways without driver and complete automation. So even if you drink and the car can drive for you, if you press the button to go to a home, go to home. But even if you drink, um, the automobile uh, can automatically take you home. Probably that is the top thing that you're thinking about or image. But okay, sure, there are several points. Warning and information providing and interruption to the driver. There are different levels of uh, autonomous driving. On an actually, uh, actual cars on the uh, market, adaptive uh, cruise control, rain keeper assistance. And this is an assistance system, assist system. And if we enhance the volume of control there, actually, as it is, actually complete automation will be possible for a car to run, for a car to run. 
The car equipped with ACC and rain keep that has been available for 10 plus years. And if there is no input for about 10 seconds, then assistance is stopped. But if you exclude things like that, then still complete automation can be used and the car can run smoothly on a highway. That is already launched into the market. But actually, for us to launch out autonomous driving in the market, what is necessary? Actually, a technology development of automobile is one thing, but the interpretation of the rules and laws, and also we need readiness on the road and streets. And the, the last thing is understanding among customers. Because a car assists customers, so it's very helpful, but it, it's still illegal to drink and drive. So such understanding must be enhanced more and more. And let me talk about the technical side. A space accuracy and to what degree positioning can be made well on its own and uh, communication latency and uh, reality that is a horizontal axis a vertical axis and uh, no matter how advanced space accuracy is made it will not go to automotive autonomous driving and to cooperative autonomous system communication reliability is the point actually information and awareness level are coverable through the commercial based communication if we step uh, ahead and if you try to do a crash avoidance then dedicated DSRC will be necessary and eventually quite heavily a communication dependent autonomous driving will let's see if uh, we think about the current 3G LT latency, that's uh, 200 millisecond or 300 millisecond, then 10 times higher than that. 10 times higher speed will be needed, otherwise it will be a bit difficult to achieve that level. And from here, we'd like to talk about our vision. We take a step-by-step -step approach from basic service eventually to autonomous service. Let me skip some slides because of time allowed. And this is a, my message. Actually, we have engaged in a, a lot of demonstration systems, but no matter how much we did demonstration, we cannot reach the de de deployment. So we need to fill it operation test and followed by piloting. And for us to launch out into the market, reliability, liability must be solved. Otherwise, this cannot launch out into the market. So autom automotive industry must think together with the government on these points. So we have some uh, points that we tackled. So this is a summary with some keywords of what I mentioned. So I think uh, there will be some discussion time after this. So if you have any question, please do not hesitate to ask me then. Thank you very much.